Would you believe me if I told you that these are the stats of one of the worst competitive Pokemon ever? I mean, look at those. Four out of six of these are 130 or above, but the issue is that once this Pokemon is weakened enough, it turns into this. Yeah, not so appealing anymore, huh? This is Wishy Washy, one of many gimmick Pokemon whose entire design was based on someone sitting in an office and going, hey, you know what would be cool? And while we've had plenty of interesting Pokemon or even great gimmick Pokemon in the past, a large majority of them just don't cut it competitively. Today we'll be exploring these many failed gimmick Pokemon and explaining why they just aren't able to function well in the competitive format of VGC. If you're a singles player, some of this might not apply to you, but I'm sure you'll still find it interesting. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video on any point in time, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. As a matter of fact, you should really just subscribe right now because I have a playlist full of content just like this that you can watch once this video ends. And if you think you're subscribed, do me a favor and double check because only like half of my viewers actually are. With that, let's get into the video. Let's begin by explaining what is and what isn't a gimmick Pokemon for the sake of this video. You can make the argument that Regieleki is in fact a gimmick Pokemon since its whole deal is that it hits like a truck if it uses an electric move, but it hits like a wet noodle if it has to click any one of its two coverage options. But its design isn't so married to this single novel idea that it becomes its whole identity. Meanwhile, if I were to show you Cramorant and go, yo, it's the throat goat, and that's because Cramorant's whole identity is spitting on that thing, so let's begin with that one. Cramorant is a water flying type, and while this typing has given us some greats like Gyarados and Pelipper, in truth, it's not that great of a typing if the Pokemon isn't providing constant value or needs to tank a lot of hits. And that's exactly where Cramorant struggles. You see, Cramorant's whole deal is that if it uses either Surf or Dive, its ability Gulp Missile will activate. This causes Cramorant to retrieve an Aracuda, or if it's below half HP, a Pikachu, which it'll spit at the opponent if it takes any damage. If the opponent's hit by the Gulp Missile, they'll lose 25% of their total HP and have their defense lowered or paralyzed in the case of the Pikachu. This would be a pretty great ability if Cramorant were able to tank a hit well, but Cramorant is rocking a measly 70 HP, 55 defense, and 95 special defense stat spread, meaning that most hits, especially physical ones, will chunk it for tons of damage. On top of that, Cramorant has only 85 speed, so in a ton of cases, it'll have to tank a hit before it even gets to get the Gulp Missile ready to fire. The only way it can really guarantee it'll be able to fire off a missile is to run the Focus Sash and max out speed and special attack. At least then, Cramorant can smack the opponent with Surf and follow up with at best two missiles and at worst one. But in VGC, you need to provide just a bit more value for it to be worth it. Yes, it has Tailwind and some pretty decent offensive moves, but why ever run it when Pelipper's right there with access to both Wide Guard and Drizzle to set rain? It's not only outclassed in its typing, but its single gimmick isn't desirable enough to justify running it on a team that isn't explicitly built around it, and even then, you're gonna struggle. I'd like to say that Gen 8 brought us mostly great gimmicks, but it's home to yet another one of our offenders in Morpico. Now, typically, Pikachu clones tend to be outright great or just awful in BGC, but Morpico stands out as a notably mid and forgettable option. Of course, it's got that iconic Pikachu electric typing, and you can consider the dark typing a buff to this as it grants it better offensive stab options along with the prankster immunity. Beyond that, it has access to nuzzle for speed control and fake out to flinch on lead, so there's a lot going for it. But its ability hunger switch ends up being more of a hindrance than anything. Your typical Morpico moveset is going to be something like Fake Out, Nuzzle, Protect, and Aura Wheel. You see, Aura Wheel is a move directly tied to Morpico's ability to complete the gimmick. Morpico will begin every game satiated, but every other turn it'll swap into Hangry Mode. Aura Wheel's typing depends on which form Morpico is in. If satiated, it's a physical electric move which raises the user's speed and is a whopping 110 base power. However, it becomes a Dark type move if Morpico is Hangry. So, as you can imagine, in VGC, where many Pokemon run Protect, this is highly exploitable. Let's say Morpico is facing down a Landorus at just 1 HP, it's like right there, you can KO it whenever you want to. But Morpico simply can't, because the Landorus just has to protect every other turn and make sure that whenever it's a Dark type, Morpico doesn't get to attack, and when it's Electric type, it doesn't matter because the Landorus is immune to the attack. You can really just play around this Pokemon super easily. There are many cases like this, and if you want to opt to just not running the move in favor of something else, at that point, should you really even be running the Pokemon? Like, this is the whole point of it. It's the one thing that sets it apart. At least it's got this cute animation when it eats though. I mean, have you ever seen that? It's so rare to see this Pokemon in game that I didn't even know this existed until a couple of weeks ago. 
We might as well wrap up Gen 8 while we're talking about more Pico, because Ice Q is yet another gimmick from Galar that on paper is extremely threatening, but in reality is one of the more underwhelming Pokemon of the generation. Once again, we're looking at a form changing gimmick, only in Ice Q's case it undergoes a pretty massive change in stats. It'll start off with some pretty impressive bulk at 75 HP, 110 defense, and 90 special defense, although it only has 80 attack and 50 speed. This is fine though, as Ice Q is basically designed to be a Belly Drum sweeper. Belly Drum requires that Ice Q sacrifice half of its health to maximize its attack stat. This would normally be pretty risky if it weren't for its ability Ice Face. This ability causes Ice Q to take no damage from the first physical attack that it gets hit by. Once this ability activates, it will change forms, losing its massive Minecraft look and helmet to gain 130 base speed at the expense of its bulk. At which point, it's going to be able to outspeed the vast majority of Pokemon and smack them with either Ice Spinner or Liquidation. Despite its attack stat being at a 4x multiplier, when its base stat is 80, it can still struggle to pick up KOs. Its biggest flaw is that its ability is highly exploitable. Note that Ice Face only activates and blocks damage from physical attacks. This was likely done because in Generation 7, Mimikyu was extremely powerful as it could block all initial damage. This was later nerfed in Generation 8, where it takes a slight amount of damage after having its disguise broken, so I can see why they went with Ice Q only blocking physical damage. This means though, that not only could one simply double into the Ice Q to prevent the setup, but any special attack would simply bypass the ability altogether. This creates two forms of counterplay. You could knock it out with the Stray Heat Wave, or you could just never activate the Ice Face and force it to have to work with its measly 50 base speed, making it pretty unlikely that it'll actually ever get anything done. It's probably a pretty decent low tier in singles though. Gen 7 is a similar number of failed gimmick Pokemon as Generation 8, though the one that stands out the most has to be Wishy Washy. Like I said before, it has some pretty insane stats, all except for its HP, because its low speed is easy to work with as long as Trick Room is an option. Really, on paper this thing should be a top tier Pokemon. No Pokemon wants to have to eat a 140 base attack liquidation, but chances are you won't need to do this more than once. That base 45 HP stat actually makes it really easy to deal massive damage to this thing and knock it below 25% health. At which point, the gimmick kicks in. Wishy Washy's ability schooling causes it to be this massive powerhouse between 25 and 100% HP, but it changes into this thing once it's below 25%. Yep, this thing goes from a 620 base stat total down to just 175 making it the Pokemon with the absolute lowest base stat total in the game, and effectively, dead weight. I'm not kidding, like, if it hits this form, there's not really a reason to target it down. That thing can sit on the field, you can focus everything else, and it doesn't matter. At the start of Generation 7 VGC, some players thought that this Pokemon had some potential, but they were soon proven wrong, as a Tapu Koko can very easily turn this wall of guppies into a single small fry with a single attack. Oddly enough, Gen 7 sort of had a thing for gimmick water types, as our next entry is my personal favorite Pokemon, Golisopod. Golisopod has a pretty solid typing in bug water, and some really impressive stats with phenomenal bulk, a great attack stat, and an impressive move pool. This move pool not only includes tons of utility moves like Wide Guard, but even an assortment of priority attacks including First Impression, a 90 base power bug type move with plus 2 priority that can only be used on the first turn the user hits the field. At the time, this was Golisopod's signature move and one of the main reasons to run it. But while its move pool and bulk are pretty attractive traits, its gimmick betrays these things. Golisopod has only one ability in Emergency Exit. This causes Golisopod to automatically switch out if it's ever at 50% HP or lower. I can almost see what they were going for here. Golisopod is meant to click first impression, deal tons of damage, get switched out, and then do it again later. This would be cool and all if this weren't the same generation that introduced Psychic Train to block priority as well as the abilities Dazzling and Queenly Majesty which do the same thing. On top of that, in doubles it's especially difficult to use first impression as there's a solid chance the opponent simply fakes out your Golisopod before it's able to use the move. This ability is just so goofy dude, like its pre-evolution Wimpod has the ability Wimp Out, which the game describes as the Pokemon cowardly switches out when its HP becomes half or less. And upon evolution, this becomes Emergency Exit, which the game describes as the Pokemon, sensing danger, switches out when its HP becomes half or less. Like, dude, I don't care if you describe it as a tactical retreat now. You're literally just wimping out but trying not to make it sound lame. It's really a shame this Pokemon is stuck with this as its only ability, because there's genuinely a powerful Pokemon here with tons of utility a team would love to have, 
It walls Calyrex Ice and actually threatens it with Leech Life. If it weren't hindered by this ability which switches it out when it's below half health, it'd be a really strong Pokemon, but this strange gimmick just keeps it from fulfilling its full potential. The final gimmick water type of Gen 7 is one which you actually probably forgot existed despite how cute it is. Actually, I haven't thought about this Pokemon since 2018. Kyukumuku is a pure water type with no offensive moves other than counter and mirror coat. With great defenses at 130 for both and a puny 55 base HP stat, these attacks actually don't hit Pokemon for much damage since they're based off of the HP that Pukamuku lost. So Pukamuku has to supplement the damage output with Toxic as well as its signature ability of Innards Out. This causes the opponent who knocked out Pukamuku to be damaged for an equivalent amount of HP that the Pukamuku lost from the move that KO'd it, which is, once again, not that much health. For example, if a Garchomp with no HP investment managed to one-shot a Pukamuku at maximum HP, the Garchomp would still be standing with 21 health. It's really strange that this Pokemon was made in Generation 7 with such a mediocre gimmick, especially when you consider it's a rehash of a Gen 2 gimmick Pokemon which also isn't that great in VGC. Pukamuku is basically just Water-type Wobbuffet, only without the ability that makes Wobbuffet super annoying in singles. Wobbuffet is a pure Psychic type with a massive 190 HP stat and very low defenses. Meaning that, since Counter and Mirror Coat are based on the HP the user lost, not one-shotting this thing will likely result in you losing a Pokemon, especially since switching out is usually not an option as Wobbuffet's ability is Shadow Tag, an ability which prevents all opposing Pokemon except Ghost types and other Shadow Tag users from being able to switch out unless they're using a switching item or move. So Pokemon would often be trapped in with Wobbuffet and forced to attack it, resulting in them getting KO'd. While it could work in singles and even was banned because of how annoying it could be in certain situations, it just wasn't a reliable enough gimmick to function in the doubles format of VGC, where doubling into a Pokemon or just making it out was a pretty reliable way to deal with Wobbuffet. But where Wobbuffet gameplay could easily put a player to sleep with how boring it is, Kamala just comes asleep right out of the box. I'm not gonna lie guys, I didn't understand how Kamala's ability worked until this week. And I didn't need to know, because this thing basically is non-existent in VGC, as it's not really that good. So basically Kamala has the ability Comatose. This ability simply makes it so Kamala is always treated as though it's sleeping, only without the downside of not being able to move. What exactly does this thing do? Well, the biggest thing is that Kamala can't be burned, slept, paralyzed, or poisoned, because the game thinks it's already sleeping and you can't burn a sleeping Pokemon. Beyond that, Kamala can use moves which require the user be asleep all the time, and since Snore is quite possibly the worst move ever designed, it means that Kamala is really only used for one move set. Kamala will combine the move Last Resort, a 140 base power normal move which can only be used if all other moves have been used, with Sleep Talk, a move which will randomly select another move in the user's move set if the user is asleep. The thing is that Last Resort will always fail if it's the only move the user knows, so most Pokemon don't even bother running it. But Kamala can effectively bypass this by using Sleep Talk to call Last Resort, which will not fail because Sleep Talk, the only other move Kamala knows, was technically used. This means that Kamala is the only Pokemon in the game who can run a Choice Banded Last Resort, as the Choice Band increases the user's attack stat by 50%, but doesn't allow the Pokemon to switch moves. While this might sound kinda broken, you need to keep in mind that using only normal moves means that Kamala can be walled by Rock, Steel, and Ghost types. And Choice Banded Last Resort sounds great until you realize that this dude is rocking this stat spread. Yeah bro, good luck carrying the team with the bulk and speed of a teddy bear. Yeah, I guess that's kind of appropriate, you are pretty cute. But don't get me wrong though, 115 attack is pretty good, but it's not going to be sweeping if it doesn't go first. Also, as a side note, I want to point out that if Komala's on the field with a Darkrai, Darkrai is not legal in VGC, but I found this out when researching this, um, it takes damage from bad dreams every turn. That's just hilarious. Like, Darkrai is literally just sitting there like, nightmare, nightmare, nightmare. I like that. It's it's cute. It's funny. It's stupid. But yeah, that's why Komala fails. While these gimmick Pokemon are certainly interesting, creative, and cool-looking designs, competitive threats, they are not. In most cases, the best way to fix them is to simply grant them a different ability, usually removing the gimmick and their identity altogether. Golisopod would be much stronger with an ability like Tough Claws, but then it's not a gimmick Pokemon anymore. And I guess Komala would probably work best if it got a stat buff to increase its bulk or possibly an evolution. But let me know how you'd rework these abilities and Pokemon in the comment section down below. If you think I missed a Pokemon, let me know as well. But there's a chance I actually did cover them in my other video about gimmick Pokemon where I cover the ones that actually do work. 
It is kind of a rough video though, as it's one of my earlier discussion vids, but feel free to check it out in the playlist on screen after the video ends. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and subscribe, it'd mean the world to me. And if you want to support me even further, you can check out my Patreon page or become a YouTube channel member by clicking the join button below. This gets you a sneak peek at future videos and even some bonus content. You'll also see your name at the end of my videos like all these lovely people. A special thanks to my most boosted supporters, Adok V, Avatar67, Halo, Invisibleish, Jordan Harridge, Pika Power, and Ranger Lance for their generous pledges. Another way to support me is to check out all the videos in the playlist on screen right now. I know you'll find something in there that you'll enjoy. I also have a second channel where I talk about the current VGC metagame trends and a Twitch channel where I stream, both of which will be in the description down below. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.